Welcome back to Rose of Winter, where Falconer is being a dick. And very, very rude. Ow, hey, that is not okay! Well, we end up doing what he wants, anyway. How is it, po how is it possible that I'm getting bossed around by someone I could literally step on? I guess he's right. That This is what, I, he, what he hired me for. There's nothing much I can do. I trudge on, feeling a little resentful. Just when I thought we were getting along better. The trail is steady. There's snow and wind, but it hasn't gone too harsh. Maybe this will be okay after all. Although it's a little hard to pay much attention to my surroundings. The first time we argued, uh, we got over it pretty quickly. This time, though, we're not sulking. We're snapping at each other. See? You see? Your worries were for nothing. I knew this path would be better. Next time, it will do you well to listen. Alright, alright, already. Gosh, you're loud for a little guy. Ah, how surprising. Another comment about my height. Have you no imagination? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if your brain were smaller than mine, despite the size of your head. What? Is that what you're ma so mad about? Look, I didn't mean little in a bad way. I only meant... But I don't get to tell him what I meant. I'm interrupted by a chilling sound that cuts through the air. Ow! Uh, <laughs> I'm not, um, not to change the subject, but now I'm kind of worried about whatever that was. Uh, behind you. Slowly, I turn around. Two piercing eyes stare right at me. A wolf? No, wolves. A whole pack of them, fierce fangs bared, their guttural growls rising in chorus. We're surrounded. See, what did I tell you about the high road? Now we're gonna do what a wolf attack. Perhaps you weren't entirely wrong. Not to worry, this sort of thing is well within my wheelhouse. No, 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 I'm handling this. You got us into this mess, I'll get us out. We shouldn't waste any more time bickering. The pack is closing in on us and they look mean. Uh, we'll wait and see what they do. I decide to wait to see what they do, but while I have my eye on the largest one, another wolf attacks. Before I can register what's happening, it's on my legs. I kick it away and almost topple over. Two more wolves leap atop me, scrabbling for a weak spot in my armor. I can take them. I know I can, but there's just so many. More than I thought. I grab for my sword and manage to knock them away. But as I get my bearings, I realize for the first time that Faulkner is no longer on my shoulder. Faulkner? Faulkner! It, in the second it takes me for uh, it takes for me to cry out, the wolves are on top of me again. I need to get to Prince Faulkner before the wolves do, but I can hardly get them away from me. The largest wolf is bared lunges from my throat. I've got to think of something fast. Gork. The large wolf stops short and, uh, short and crumbles into the snow. There's a small spurt of blood at its shaggy neck. What the? I catch a glimpse of the small shape darting through the air. Another flash and another wolf falls down dead. The rest of the pack are glancing around, panicked, searching out their invisible attacker. The tiny shape lands on a boulder and I finally see it for what it is. Prince Faulkner! There's a bloody spear in his hand, glittering like glass in the snowy sunlight. From here I can see his face. He doesn't seem scared or even very excited. He has an expression of measured calm, of certainty, that of, that of a man who is doing a job and knows how to do it well. He leaps again. It's amazing, impossible how high and fast he can jump. And then another wolf falls, pierced through the throat and killed instantly. By now, the rest of the pack has caught on. They dash off and disappear into the mountain. Faulkner, that, that was amazing. With one last graceful leap, Faulkner returns to his place on my shoulder. He wipes his brow, exhales, and gives me a cons conspiratorial tutorial wink. That was a hard word to say, my goodness. Bit of a shame to have to slaughter them like that. The poor things are only doing what nature intended. Still, if nature is red in tooth and claw, then there are times we must strive to match it. How do you jump around like that? You must be so strong, like, really strong. I... It just comes from combat training and experience, nothing more. Still, I'm not one to reject a compliment. Thank you. 
Although I can't help but notice that you didn't do much. Hey, I was caught off guard. If you'd given me a chance, I would've. We're interrupted by a low, vicious growl. Out of the corner of my eye, I see lithe and muscular shapes slink toward us. A snow leopard, poised to strike. Maybe that's the real reason the wolves ran away. Before I can blink, it lashes out, unleashing its deadly claws. Faulkner notices only too late. Oh dear. Uh, fortunately, I am ready to move. I twist my body, jerking my shoulder away so that Faulkner is just out of reach of those claws. Leopards are much more dangerous than wolves. I'm going to have to finish this quickly. The leopard pounces, and I duck out just the right moment. I grab my sword, and in one fluid motion, I slide my blade into the beast's chest, right through the heart. The leopard doesn't have time to cry out in pain. It gasps, voiceless, and dies. Well then. Once I'm sure the leopard is done for, I retrieve my sword and wipe the blood off in the snow. Rosemary, I have to admit, that was some very nice footwork. If you hadn't moved at precisely the right moment, I wouldn't have, I would have been killed. You're not clearly as clumsy as you look. <laughs> High praise. Really though, I mean it. You were amazing. Thanks, Faulkner. I'm sorry I doubted you when you said you could you could protect me. You're you're obviously an amazing fighter. Well it's clear to me now that the same goes for you. Once again, I find myself staring at Faulkner a little too long. Uh, this time, though, he stares right back. Um, that sphere of yours is pretty cool. Is it made of glass? Oh, it's a type of, of clear diamond, actually. A special product of the Fey Kingdom. We found many uses for it. Would you like to see it? I take it gingerly, even though it's like a toy spear in my hands. It's surprisingly heavy. Wow, it feels hefty, even to me. It must be hard to carry. No more so than your sword is for you, I'm sure. That thing is as almost as big around as you are. <clears throat> yeah, I guess you're right. I had to train a long time before I could even lift it. There you are. If a weapon is not first a burden, then any fool could use it. You and I, Rosemary, are no fools. Anyway, this spear is another gift from my home, so I'm happy to carry it, regardless of its weight. You know, my sword is kind of a special thing from my homeland, too. It's made from an alloy that Northerners discovered a few hundred years ago. Really? I never heard of that. Do explain. We spend the rest of the day walking on, chatting excitedly about swords and weapons. Although it's cold and harsh out here on the trail, I hardly notice it. Faulkner isn't exactly shy, but I've never seen him so talkative. It's not until we notice that the sun has set that we realize we should stop. And anyway, for my money, a good halberd is... Oh, it's gotten dark. Should we stop and make camp for the night? Yeah, that's a good idea. I had no idea how late it was. You know, this was nice. Also guys, if you don't know what a halberd is, uh, Google it. Look at the images, you'll, then it, they're pretty neat actually. They're a polearm type weapon. It really was. I've, I haven't had a good shop talk like that since my academy days. <laughs> and I've never really talked to anyone like that ever. I've never known anyone who was interested in swords and stuff, not in the same way I was. I guess I didn't realize how lonely it was until now. Yes, I, I know what you mean. It doesn't take long to make camp in a nearby cave. We settle in and rest by the firelight. I'd say the journey is going to going pretty well so far, give or take a wolf attack or two. Haha, <laughs> I quite agree. You know, you've been working hard all day, carrying me, slaying beasts. Why don't you sit back and let me make you some dinner? Sure, that sounds good, but I only brought rations, like dried meat and stuff. I don't know what you can make from that. Rosemary, 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 do you take me for some ill-prepared duller wandering around without the makings for fine cuisine, always close at hand? Um, are you saying you've been carrying around the ingredients for a fancy dinner this whole time? Always. Here, sit back, my dear. Allow me to make you, uh, take you on a culinary journey. Um, I'm not picky, but sure, whatever you say. Faulk Faulkner immediately gets to work. 
From his pack, he pulls some strip, small strips of what looks like some kind of smoked fish, clove, garlic, and which has he has to grab with both arms and some other ingredients in small jars that have been diced into incredibly fine powder. He uses his spear to cut up the garlic, and I realize that preparing ingredients must be really hard work for pay people like him. Still, the work goes quite quickly, and from how confident and how easy he is, it seems like he enjoys cooking and does it often. I guess this is why I never quite think of Faulkner as pompous. It's not a facade he's putting on. He's got the skill to back up his attitude. Soon, he, pre he presents me with a small tray of food. Even though it's tiny, it looks delicious. Smoked bay minnow with ginger and garlic. It's a staple in the palace. You'll love it. Uh, although I suppose for you, it's more of a sampling than a meal. I do apologize. I didn't think I'd be cooking for anyone but myself. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure it'll be delicious. Bottoms up. Without wasting a second, I grab the plate in my fingers and shove the food in my mouth. Bogner looks slightly aghast. Oh my gosh, that's so good! I can't believe you just made that! And you can make it whenever you want, eat it all the time, you're so lucky! Rosemary, you just swallowed the whole meal in one go. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, was that bad manners? That was, they were, they really were delicious, though. Am I crazy, or did I taste a hint of lemon? Oh, you noticed that? Yes, that's my personal twist on the classic dish. It compliments the fame as natural, um... Rosemary, you're alright. It's only when he says something that I realize I've started crying. Hastily, I try to wipe my tears away. Goodness, I don't know what's wrong with me. This is so embarrassing. Sniff. I'm sorry, Faulkner, please ignore me. My cooking wasn't that bad, was it? <sighs> no, that's... No, that's the problem. It was really good. Too good. I haven't had a... Cook a meal cooked for me since I've been home. My mother used to go fishing and fry up what she caught for us with salt and a twist of lemon. I guess tasting this, it brought up some, some strong memories. Faulkner comes close and hops onto my pack, so it's high enough uh, to put his hand on my arm. Although, even though he's so small, his touch is surprisingly warm. It's very soothing. Haha, <laughs> sniff. Thanks for being sweet to me. I'm sorry, I really don't cry very often. You miss your home. It's understandable. I miss mine too. How long have you been away? A long time. I left to become a knight. I don't want to give up. Not ever. This is more important to me than anything. But sometimes, I just miss my family so much, and I can't help but daydream about what it would be like to just go home. I can't do that though. Not until I can make them proud. Not until I can make myself proud. I'm just stubborn like that, I guess. You're not stubborn. You're passionate. You're determined. It's admirable. Admirable. Excuse me. For what it's worth, I'm already proud of you. It takes a stout heart to make a sacrifice for something worthwhile. <laughs> I'm glad you think so, Sniff. You know, I think it's a good sign that your cooking made me cry. It means the taste of it went straight to my heart. You're a great chef. Faulkner sm smiles but looks away and runs a hand through his hair. He chuckles low under his breath, the way you do when you're not happy about something, but have to laugh at it anyway. Faulkner, is something the matter? It's just that I'm cooking for you and talking to you about your feelings, your hopes and regrets, your dreams. I suppose this must be what it's like to have a wife. I, I could get used to it if she were like... He doesn't finish the thought, but casts me a meaningful glance. Is he saying that he wants his wife to be like me? I feel a little rush of excitement and a twinge of guilt. Um, um, haha. <laughs> I bet you'll be happy to see your fiancé again, once all this is over. Actually, Rosemary, I've never met her. Huh? What do you mean? It's a purely political marriage. I decided our union would be the best course of action for my kingdom. I sent her a letter declaring my intentions a month ago, and she agreed. I have no idea what kind of person she is, or how I'll feel about her. All I know about her is that she's fey like myself and wealthy. Other than that, my bride is a stranger to me. Oh, I didn't know that. I feel strange fluttering my chest, at once dizzy and at the same time light and free. So, so you're not really, I mean, you're not in love with someone else or, or anyone, I mean? No, in fact, until I reach the city, I suppose you could say I'm unattached. That's interesting. My face is so red again, but 
Since we're warm by the fire, there's no blaming it on the cold this time. Anyway guys, I'm gonna end it here. It's been 15 minutes. And I gotta yawn again. The power of being tired. <laughs> anyway guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Stay kawaii. And have fun out there.